In the heart of a small village nestled within the thick forest of Yoruba land, there lived a prince named Adebayo. At 40 years old, Adebayo was a man of regal bearing and wisdom, respected by all who knew him. His father, Oba Alade, was a wise and just king, and the village people loved their royal family deeply. Yet, despite his nobility and many virtues, there was a shadow that hung over Adebayo's life. From a young age, Adebayo had been afflicted with a mysterious curse, an unbearable odor that clung to him like a second skin. No amount of bathing or perfumes could rid him of his smell. The elders consulted Babalaos, the diviners of the land, and sacrificed goats and chicken, but the curse remained. As Adebayo grew older, his condition became a burden. He was strong and handsome, with a heart full of kindness, but no woman would come near him. Marriage proposals were refused, suitors fled, and even the bravest maidens of the village trembled at the thought of becoming his wife. His parents, deeply saddened by their son's fate, had almost given up hope. One evening, as the sun sets behind the towering Iroko trees, an old woman named Iaseke wandered into the village. She was known as a traveler and a healer, known to wander from town to town, helping those in need. Her wrinkled skin and silver hair spoke of many years and countless stories. As she walked through the village, she noticed the solemn faces of the people and heard whispers of the prince's plight. Curious, Iaseke sought an audience with Oba Aladi. She was granted entry into the palace where she found the king and the queen in a state of worry. Adebayo sat quietly beside them, his head bowed in shame. Iaseke, Oba Alade begun. We are honored by your visit. What brings you to our village? I heard of your son's troubles, Kabiesi, Iaseke replied, her voice strong despite her age, and I believe I can help. The king and queen exchanged glances of hope and skepticism. If you can get rid of our son's cross, we will be forever in your debt, the queen said. Iaseke nodded and turned to Adibayo. She looked deep into his eyes, as if searching for something hidden behind the surface. After a moment, she spoke. Prince Adibayo, the curse that plagues you is not of this world. It was placed upon you by a spirit from the other side. A spirit angered by an ancient wrong. But there is a way to break it. The prince listened intently his heart pounding with a mix of fear and hope. What must I do, Iaseke? He asked. You must travel alone to the sacred groove of Maila, the god of wisdom and destiny. There you will find a tree unlike any other, a tree with silver leaves and golden bark. Beneath that tree lies a hidden spring Drink from the spring and the cross will be lifted. But beware, the journey is perilous and you will not speak a word to anyone you meet along the way, no matter what. Without hesitation, Adebayo agreed to the tax. The next morning, as the village was still clocked in the midst of dawn, he set out his journey. The path was long and Trencherous, leading him through dense forests, according to raging rivers and up steep mountains. Along the way, he encountered many strange and wondrous beings, talking animals, mischievous spirits, and even a beautiful maiden who asked him for help. But remembering Iyashekes warning, he spoke not a word. After many days, of travel, Adebayo finally reached the sacred groove of Myla. 
the groove was unlike anything he had ever seen before, filled with a soft golden light that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. In the center of the groove stood the tree with silver leaves and golden bark, just as Yaseke had described. With trembling hands, Adebayo approached the tree, beneath the tree. Hidden among the roots, he found the spring. The water was clear as crystal, and when he drank from it, he felt a warmth spread through his body, as if the sun itself had filled his veins. As he drank, the foul odor that had clung to him for so long began to fade. The curse was lifting, but as the last drop of water passed his lips, a voice spoken from the shadow. You have done well, Adibayo. The voice said, but now you must answer one final question. What will you do with your life now that you are free? For a moment, Adibayo was tempted to respond, to express his joy and relief, but remembered Yaseke's warning and held his tongue. The voice persisted, growing more insistent, but Adebayo remained silent. Finally, the voice faded away, and with it, the last remnants of the curse. The groove became quiet once more, and Adebayo knew his journey was over. When he returned to the village, the people could hardly believe their eyes. The prince, who had once been shunned, was now welcomed with open arms. The odor was gone and in its place was a fragrance as sweet as fresh flowers, rejoicing everywhere. Adebayo was soon married to a beautiful and kind-hearted maiden and the village rejoiced. Iyasheke, having fulfilled her purpose, disappeared into the night, never to be seen again. And so, Prince Adebayo's life was filled with happiness and prosperity. His once sorrowful tale, now a story of hope and redemption that would be told for generations to come. <laughs>